final map. Looking at their most recent series, they lost to, uh, or not, Equinox lost to Cloud9 Blue, but looking at Gen G, uh, they got crushed by TSM 13 to 4. They didn't look so hot against Envy either. That's a bit of a concern if you're looking at a team like Gen G. But we are going ahead right into the game, guys. Take it away. Lamina is going to be the first point of contact, dashing into his own smoke for the eighth side, but it's being traded off here by Gen G. Paint shells from Sean, we talked about him before. He doesn't get a kill with his weapon, but the arsenal is good enough. Lamina has pushed forward, has a few, lights a few rather, and dings a few but only gets one kill. At least this fight has been planet, but Jinji still has a one minute advantage here, Lex. Low HP on the raise, and this is one of those situations where I, I, I think for Equinox, you almost want to get proactive with the arm, elbow, trying to find the kills. One player and player and what you want. Player player takes player all the DX in at a desperate turn. Almost gets the better of win. However, the jet prevails. Jinji takes pistol map three on split. That's yeah, another fast A play coming out from Equinox. I mean, this is something that, that Mina seems to be doing better than any other jet in NA, which is these dash plays into bomb sites, creating space. Cute fat boy finds one at a GMD, now a five on four. And they have possession of the bomb site. So for Equinox now, this is a matter of bending five off a full planted. V5 retake. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse me, for, uh, post plant. Uh, I think for Genji right now, like you have the force buy coming in from Equinox and they've this is already like a desperate scenario for Genji, right? Like mm -hmm. this is four V5. And you don't even have top of a ramp control. Mini here is so dead. Any moment now he's going to be coming out, finding one on a PL1. And I almost wonder if you just save here. Yeah. Like, uh, the guy like oh, pressing into the bomb site, finds one, win, 1v3. Two players are hurt on the other side of Equinox, but I don't think he knows that. Mm -hmm. That said, first kill, not going to go his way. And Equinox forcing. You know, following a pistol around, being able to force and just rush into the A bomb site. I mean, creating that much space with a jet. You know, especially every single map where they have this fast blitz play with the jet. And Genji on Ascent and now Split have not had an answer for it. So DXN getting spotting the aggression out. And I think it's only Mikael that's going to pick up a kill on a decop. Yeah, so this is three kills quickly coming for Equinox and Genji. Probably another lost round here. Yeah, the rest is just going to be a matter of time before the last players fall down, especially with that dark cover towards male. And as they peek out, they hear the footsteps possibly of these guys rotating back towards the A site. So just to reflect back on that previous round here, Lex, they did throw the fault line earlier on, though, from GMD, from the elbow, and it did slow down. Players, but they had nothing else to chime in onto, the, uh, onto that. Nobody peeked out towards the window. They didn't look out towards a ramp. So you couldn't really take advantage of the fault line that actually stunned a few players from Gen G. And when you were saying, would, would it have been a good idea to maybe save their weapons? I think so. Because it was a five versus four for, in favor of Equinox. That means that they all keep their, their, spec, or their stingers into this round with possibly just one player who had a ghost that's going to upgrade. So that means you still have a potential with Gen G going Spectres versus Stingers into the next round should Equinox decide to say, look, we're going to keep working with these bonus rounds in this economy that we built up, and maybe Gen G could turn it around. It all depends what happens there for the theory crafting for that team, if they wanted to upgrade or not for Equinox, but I think the save would have been the right call for Gen G. I think you're absolutely right. And one of the more you're probably going to see six flashes getting blown up here towards this B Haven, where it will blind PL1 at lower ramp at hell side right here. And here comes the execution to move through. A fault line is going to hurt GMD. He's going with the flash point, but the crossfire is still perfect here for Genji. And four immediately fall, leaving only one at the B main. And that's a huge fat boy. Cyber Cage is out, and he gets popped by Sean with a 4K on top of that. Okay. Salvation for Equinox is that they still had that bonus round in their favor, but Genji definitely showed a stomp on that B heaven side hold. Yeah. Up there, 30 seconds side. left. And it starts things B off with a fake. fake. Yeah, B heaven fake definitely. Decop with the rolling thunder, but they're not moving here. They're running with so many footsteps, and you have Wind. He hears all of this. He sprays the first kill onto Mina, and that's also the spike down. So again, the jig is up where you have a chance for Genji to already go for an immediate rotate with 13 seconds left on the clock, and we're only starting to plant now. But Cute Fat Boy was in a great position, but PL1 does not pay, uh, do the mistake of not checking that corner. Same thing for Mikael, but a little bit too late. Pancakes, by the way, playing as a raise when he's usually playing as an omen, and you're putting DXN on the omen instead. Here comes a retake from Genji. Four players moving forward, all from the spawn, and Win and Sean are going to work once again, and they get the defuse to make it three to two.
I'm impressed with Genji's discipline right there. Obviously, there was some movement when that ult does get popped, but it was almost immediate where the comms come out that there was presence towards A main. Omen is there behind pillar now, but you know, as far as the breach goes, like you said, flashing through the pillar, the B pushes get so strong and so scary, so good. especially when you have Raze and Jet in your arsenal. Equinox quickly moves onto the bomb site, uncontested. A little bit of damage getting traded out, but but ultimately just a clean take and the bomb will go down for free. That was still well done there for Mikael with that smoke, or should I say the paranoia, because as soon as he hears the showstopper and also the blade storm, um, not the blade storm, sorry, just the showstopper that comes out, he's able to go with the paranoia to push everybody back and also go for a blind shot for the showstopper where Genji could play the rotate on this broken bar that you have from Equinox. And they're closing in very well for Genji as they're dropping them one by one. Two, Only a crossfire setup, which is perfect for Equinox, but the positions the are given If you don't know where he's going to be at, so nice kill coming out from inside of Genji to finally... <laughs> I, I almost spoke too soon to almost get the, get the kill before the side push comes out, but Mina has other plans. So, I, you know, when I'm stumbling over my words at this point, Van Silly, because these guys, they're playing games that are, it's just, it's so impressive to watch. Yeah. The, the, the presence of mind to know, like, okay, we're just going to sit here and wait for him to peek because he plays there. We know that. Still a four Finds the kill. Four, though. Yeah. A push coming out through heaven. Win whipping one, it'll cost PL1 holding steadfast in the back of the bomb. Exactly oh, to spam. Through the sign, unfortunate. But now Gen G in a 2v3 is looking rough. What really was a promising start, as I mentioned, with beautiful operator frag. And uh, now it's a two on two. GMD eating paint. Not quite enough damage getting put out on him to make it feel threatened. Guns are not going to get saved. They're going to go for it here. Fault line coming out of sight. Paranoia comes out. Doesn't catch either. <laughs> Doesn't matter. GMD and Mikael prevail too. Thick, crisp, juicy frags coming out for Gen G. Four on four, four to three now. Uh, defensive side split. I think as we've we've kind of yeah. seen this map evolve, getting a little bit more attack sided, but getting four rounds early in this half, I, I think Gen G's looking strong. See flashes for you to take corners, for example, from male into B heaven. You're gonna see these type of fast Shadow executions Star. off the utility of breach and it definitely shows into this round but we'll talk about it a little bit later we're just trying to change the pace for equinox so far pushing aggressively towards this mid side but they, they didn't have like some sort of a save going on so they were just trying to catch them off guard and sean goes with another 4k on top of that so ju just to add a little bit more here lex at the same time is I think Equinox is still doing a great job to weaken the defense of Jin to actually prevent Equinox from getting these plants. But so far, it seems like the key ingredient could be for Jin G, five ultimates to hold their ground. Yeah. Uh, I, moving the Cypher over at B, I think in a lot of these scenarios, doesn't really stop an Equinox push, right? Like, you can still jet dash in, clear out trips. You have Breach that is just, like, going to destroy that bomb site with blindness and other things. But... I, I wonder whether or not, you know, the strength of what Genji was just showing us for the past few rounds, having the raise there, it's not so much that Sean needs to, like, make tremendous plays. Like, he's been sitting in crossfires a lot of the time, mm -hmm. even though Equinox knows he's there. I think it's more the threat of running into paint shells, salt, whatever. Forget that. Push comes in. Pancake Showstopper comes out. Satchel charges out of sight. Doesn't find anybody yet. Might just let it loose. There it goes into the face of Win. That's a direct rocket. Pancakes circling around the site. GMD finds one, but he's quickly pinched. Three on four now. Equinox has found the bomb site, has found the advantage, has found the bomb plant. And, uh, you know, for Gen G. On screen, thinking somebody was pushing forward, but they're not there. Yeah, I wonder whether or not they're they're still considering going for this. It seems like they are. But nothing free giving out by, giving it out by Equinox yet. A lot of discipline. Showstopper finds one, Mikhail finds another. Oh, Pancakes is just too good. Holding strong on the bomb site, picks up two, I mean, the answers, but they're going to need to come up with something quick here. I mean, this is five to four now. One round after another, it seems like Gen G is getting countered out, and they just come right back. Mikael getting a an uncontested frag onto Mina. It's almost like her aggression sometimes, you know, it is Jet after all, but <laughs> that aggression costs them. You know, not having the, the refrag there is just painful, but I, I it wonder is what it is. Because I heard a flashpoint come out too, and oh, when it was a one versus one fight in the front, he actually wasn't even blinded oh, for uh, GMD. Destroyed. So maybe that, or should I maybe say, Mikael, maybe that's the reason why. But a full line to come into the B site. 
coming out of the shadows as well from a shadow step from the omen to make it inside the site as well. Here. We're looking for this plant and we're looking for repositioning. You saw how a little bit powerful uh, it was there for Equinox to move inside that site. Finally, as they move out of their positions, they're finally get the spike Cover down, really but it's still a one man advantage. And it can go for a kill early here and throw the hat out to get the last two players. So they're trying their best to just to keep the L1 alive on this retake while three of them are moving up towards heaven's side. Now they're closing in. It's smoked out towards the back of the site. So DXN is on his own towards actually they're the bait switch. He goes for the white side. He gets the kill. Three of them fall. So it's a two versus one. At least with the bodies falling, we know where the last player is at. At least the last two players. So GMD is on a one versus one. He's trying to clear out the back of the side. Low HP is the oh. Gets the wall bang. Well done here for GMD. So close for Equinox at that point. But is it close on time? Is it going to be the same scenario? It will not be. Gen G will be able to get the defuse. And they're up 6 4. Man, that was looking dicey for a second. That are in play. But I'm just kind of in my mind now positing that, you know, in that post-plant scenario, NG just letting it come down to a 1v1, like, that's not, that's not consistent. That's not something that you can bank your money on consistently. However, these opening kills, Mikael finding another, I think it's like the third round in a row where we've seen it a five on four pretty early for Gen G. It seems to be making a pretty significant difference. I mean, I'm just the, the idea that Equinox is already in a stranglehold over here at B main, and there's no reason for, for Gen G to be doing anything you know, drastic. Mm -hmm. They're just, they need to patiently wait for, for Equinox to show their hand and they're gonna go for this B play once more, but this time there's no Mina dash. They just gotta walk contact out and Sean's gonna find one free one. Whiffs the second one, but still in a commanding position to defend this bomb site with Mikael. He will fall, but four on okay. two. Pancakes and DXN putting the bomb down cleanly. There is a breach ult. And it's a four on two. So this is definitely an Equinox. Uh, it'd be a desperate move here for them to be able to win it. But Pancakes is already in in position to do so. And I, Double pushing the flank on Heaven here. What do you think, Fant Billy? Hey, it was going to be a double push on Heaven first, but they decide to split out. So there's only going to be Pancakes at the pillar. He's affected by it. But DXN is in a great position right now. Even Wiz first, but GMD was there for the trade. And the second one. That's good enough. The defuse will come through. And Genji... They, they did a perfect retake. When we talked about retakes on their end, there was that one round Lex. Maybe, I think it was a third. They're going to try that again. Yeah, Mina's on site. It's already pressuring oh, everybody man. back, and this just doesn't even matter. Like, this is not yep. a winning solution to just sit back and try and catch the jet. Unfortunately, it costs them there. Equinox already up 5v3 with a bomb planted on the A bomb site. There's no daylight. <laughs> for Gen G right now. They're going to have to claw this round back into the light. And unfortunately, it's just... Here. Uh, that, that, that play is so powerful. And the fact is, they just haven't reacted properly to it in this half. The extent finding another kill. This round on, on to Sean. And that's probably going to wrap it up here. Yep. We just have uh, player one in a 1v5. And while I'd love to see an ace clutch, I just think this, this attack half, you know, if Equinox had maybe stuck to their guns with what was working a few more of these rounds this definitely could have been a more commanding half for them but five rounds is nothing to switching sides you know wag your finger at so i'll just say this gen g with some excellent retakes in that first half uh really surprising me with the rebound from ascent mm -hmm. what are your thoughts man silly i think at this point you saw how successful it was for equinox on those a holds uh pulse plan situation getting into the site when i talked about how difficult it would be to actually have to re have to retake the site towards the A side because you have the breach flash points, because you have the fault lines on the retakes, because you have the paranoia that we saw in the pistol round. I think maybe how Gen G could have maybe adapted on how they could maybe retake the A side better was not to have GMD play so deep inside the A side every single time out in the open where Jet Dash seems to be coming into fruition every time for Equinox there. So there was no have a perfect hold too. B push gets thwarted by an excellent fault oh. line. Mina gets a little aggro over at B main because of a one dink. And unfortunately, there's a second teammate to back that player up. Mina will fall, 5v4 now. Genji with a few players who literally have no HP or are already pretty significantly damaged. So, you know, moving over to the other bomb site is a little bit of a risk, right? You, mm -hmm. None of these gunfights are you going to be able to just overpower and overwhelm right there. coming up that ropes area if there's a defender there. They decide to think better of it and move back towards B. Decom now front and center oh with this breach God. needs to hit his shots. He go, does get one on a GMD. Pancakes times in as well. Now it's a one on two. 
Sean and now in a 1v1. And it's it's Keith Fat Boy on the other left. side that just needs to close this round out for Equinox. He knows exactly where each other are. The nade comes out. Woo! And surely Sean does not fail the kill. It is not four beautiful kills coming out from Sean. And uh moving into that beer, it seemed as though Mina thought he just blew up their strat. Yep. Like taking that gunfight, pressing after it. So technically, Equinox on that hold, especially to see the players pushing up towards that B heaven. It should have been an easier hold on their side. Counter flashes came through. You saw that when the breach actually peeked out, Decop looked towards B Heaven. Three or four of them were blinded, but he got tapped by a fault line coming in from D and D, which allowed them, despite being flashed, get those kills and capitalize on the trades later on into the site. So I just think that Gen G, not necessarily were lucky when they got into the site, but the numbers advantage that they had, despite low HP was was the key factor in the end where at Equinox least in his current state is yeah. that a lot of his animations are very slow uh a lot of the times you need to be able to use utilize your kit correctly mm -hmm. you know you're not flashing for yourself necessarily you're not using utility for yourself all the time but certainly your teammates need to be in a position to use that utility when you do so a free bomb site is going to come out here for Chenji. i say free i take that back you fat boy uh, <laughs> somehow is is out of my vision picks up two and this is a messy round coming in here and gen g is now in a two on three they're on the bomb site mikhail is going to have a dog fight with somebody up in heaven Oof. that's decop he's going to have a long range phantom battle versus a specter and it's just that's not a fight you're going to win mikhail unfortunately and gen g pl1 now in a 1v3 has a specter in hand obviously is full bonded this round with heavy armor uh and i, like I think it, you know after an investment here you know, they you, have all yeah. the strength you know in their favor here and i wonder whether or not you just save this like this is so tough well it's bonus round right do some damage left. why is he oh my god somehow he still survives and so will pl1 if he jumps away for safety and finally as he repeats he was killed and i think it's fine for him to to continue to press like that like i said the bonus round for comes sure. in for genji i think the idea yeah, there mid player right away they back off have second thoughts about clearing her back out of there and uh yeah a jet holding a judge it's never a definitely not a relieving yeah, sight you're saving 10 seconds left yeah that's crazy i i really didn't think that they were going to push into me there after i got that first kill but i i'm surprised that they didn't move with more urgency but i guess it's a better better position to put yourself in here right because you're yeah. going to be back on a full body you're not going to be risking you know losing your economy in some desperate gambit to planet b and beyond that you know, like why, and then you only they were had... already, but okay, okay, okay. So I missed it's out okay. on, on yeah, everybody. Your point else. is still valid, though. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're still right, and I, and I think like you know the way Gen G is approaching this half so far from what we've seen, willing to take it slow, willing to work a pick somewhere, kind of the same way that Equinox was, but moving into a four or five man hit is is obviously what we're looking at here. And so we do have, and this is something that I, I touched on a little bit in ascent, like throughout this series. You've just seen a, a lack of, of spread across the map, which isn't totally unusual at this point in the game. But I think what it is is just a lack of, of willingness to be a lurker, willingness willingness to kind of get behind enemy lines. And I think that's probably a good thing. Teams are playing very clean Valorant at times, and I think a lot of that has to do with the control that they've been exerting. That said, Win is already on the bomb site. Gen G is flooding in behind him. Mikhail does find one on Amina, so this is a 5v4 correction. 4v4, Keith Batboy finds left. one at a PL1. Cypher down. Pancakes finds Good another one to Sean. 3v4. Gen G not put the spike down yet as it's in front of that planner at hell. And it's only a matter of time before GMD crosses to the bomb site to put it down. 15 seconds left on the block. Shouldn't feel pressured to put it down in any kind of urgency. I don't think. Well, actually, here it is. Win finds two. And that might be enough. It's just DXN. In a 1v2, he knows where one player is up in heaven, knows where this player's sight. Crossfire comes out, swing from GMD, shuts it down. But man, win not getting, getting damaged by that uh, by the blast packs for them to check that corner. So a little bit of a question mark there on the retake there for Equinox. At the same time, though, I still want to commend Gen G on how they executed into that site. Because the from the shadows that came in from GND looked for for um for information, sorry, towards that screen side. And when he actually got it canceled, spotting those opponents, he was still able to hold down towards middle boxes and still catch the rotation of Mina from B Heaven. So that allowed no rotates to be 
coming in from Equinox, and everybody was able to focus towards Heaven side and Spawn side as well for Gen G. So that was one big individual play that allowed the attackers to just secure that round in the end. But somehow they should have cleared that. Heaven split. Yeah. This Heaven Split is so strong, and I was going to put a spotlight after you were done talking on on this Omen play into ropes from GMD, but it doesn't even matter. The pistol play onto A is so decisive that, okay, I take that back. I thought Pancakes might get caught off guard there. He does not. He holds strong. Mina will fall Pancake for like three. Now it's a 2 one one with GMD and no hope whatsoever. DXN silences. I hope at some point throughout this half, Genji can go back to that strat and we get to see, you know, that lurk Here. actually come to fruition. You know, I, I didn't bring it up for no reason, but it looks like they have a plan for it. Didn't get to see it there, didn't need it. PL1 looking really down. aggressive here at A ramp. Finds Q Fat Boy in, you know, oh. an unsuspecting corner. Where is oh, he still gets it. <laughs> PL1 whips back around and collects Mina, who's looking for that refrag. That was actually a really great re-aggress from Mina, knowing that PL1 had crossed back and wasn't going to re-aggress that, but... PL1 just way too much experience. No, so making it to an open side. I was going to say, give them some orbs because Quinn is sitting spike right planted. in front of that orb at a main, but they're still going to let the spike get planted instead. But you still have somebody just uh, trying to look around, trying to hunt him down because they know the economy is still pretty low here for Equinox, especially as they made it into a flawless site from two green entries from player one. So player one allows the Gen G to secure this round here. But they're not really going on a hunt themselves. It was still an expensive round for Genji on the attack because Sean also only has a frenzy into this round here. He's only gonna he's gonna be the only one that's gonna look for that information. But as he saw nobody towards B Heaven, the rest of them here are just gonna save their weapons. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you have a, a three round gap now that you've secured yourself. You know that Equinox has Equinox's way currently. So you know, as far as momentum goes, as far as you know where your mindset might be. Uh, and certainly whether or not nerves or, or stress, frustration, anxiety, whatever is getting to you now at this point is really, I mean, this is Gen G's game to win here, 11 to 8. It would be, if they somehow lost this match, this would be the round which I'd point out and be like, this is where things finally turned around for Equinox. This is, this is desperate, I think, for them at this point. And the fact that they have a pretty good read on where Gen G is on the map, this is pretty safe. But, Two players towards B right now, knowing that they're in B main. Uh, the ult does come out through B heaven, doesn't get a thing. Oh. And Q Fat Boy collecting too. This is big. Sean and Mikhail do fall. 5v3. Genji looking for a foothold in the bomb site. Win will help to do that with a pick onto Mina. Q Fat Boy collecting his third win fall. 30 seconds left. GMD getting sprayed down by pancakes, and now it's just PL1. And, and this is exactly what you need. From Equinox is is you've effectively in the minds of Gen G, you have a 100% foolproof strat that's been working throughout this half, which is the A play. Yep. Now, falling back, you're like, okay, maybe we've won a bunch of rounds in a row. Ten Let's do a mental left. reset. Let's slow the game down a bit. They're gonna try and come at us with something different and get aggressive. Let's try B. Just see how they're doing over there. See if they're like trying to get greedy towards A. And I don't know whether or not that was exactly they did what though. their thought process was. Yeah. They ended up doing that. Yeah. But I, I do think that like having that player that I was just talking about, like a cute fat boy on the bomb site picking up a 3K, that is what you need. You need people who are, you know, quiet to be stepping up in in big situations when they're called upon. And the B play comes out, he shuts it down cleanly. Almost well, the shadows came out from Mikael, but he got sprayed while cute fat boy was flying in the back of the site. So I think I think the timing was off again. Uh, where they're if they choose to work for his B site. Just make sure you clear the back of the site. That's the second mistake that he had. Not only once, uh, right. second mistake, once on the attack and once on the defense, but not clearing the back of the site. This is a little bit of a different, I won't say pace, but a different look from Gen G. They have, they started out seconds left. towards A main, moved back over to B, then to mid, and split up A ramp. And it seems like they're finally going to contest a B split instead. So they've regrouped. They've reset, and they're there moving towards go. B. Mina catches a hot flash, a second paranoia, and that's bad news because Cute Fat Boy is now exposed on the bomb site. He falls. He cops, soon to follow. Mina in the smoke. Ten seconds left. In his tail. Man, just, those three man. kills came so fast, Five there was planted. no chance for Equinox to mount any sort of defense. Not a single point of damage on Gen G so far. Wow. Beautiful. Pancakes pressed to the back of the wall in his own spawn. Just desperately looking for a... Okay, well, a free one from GMD will be given. A nice shot onto Sean. I won't count this man out yet. He had a 1v5, well, it wasn't 1v5 clutch ace, but 
<laughs> and an ace clutch sort of earlier in the game, and it was it was beautiful. Yeah, doesn't Match happen here. Point. And into the site that forced players from rotating inside the site onto pillar, where the paranoia came in from Mikael in front of B main that totally blinded them and allowed them to get those entries into the site. That was just a beautiful play executed for Gen G to overtake that site. That was totally different from what I saw before. But this round, though, a fault light comes down, Pancake comes out, and they get the first kill into this round. So that forces Gen G to get back and to backtrack into A main, where it win opens and opens up, sorry, with a huge kill into the site. We're trying to hold the grounds for Decom, trying to slow it down for a bit, but player one punishes him after the first flash point that came out. This could be it here where Gen G could finally win versus Equinox and his best out of three, fighting into third map, and things are looking finally clear on another A side push on their side. Wow, these picks from Win are just cracking open the defense and Gen G. I mean, this is this is their round, Fat Boy in a 1v4. Gonna find GMD, but Win quickly Attack follows with a third of his own on the round. And wow, what a series from Gen G to. I mean, Ascent was was definitely not a lockup for for Equinox, but I think throughout the you know Gen G, looking like the stronger team, the results reflect that. Hats off to them. GG's and well played. Uh, but you can't take away any. I think how well Equinox is playing. I mean, just the fact that they're playing so well together to me. That's something that I usually am pretty suspect on newer teams, less experienced teams, or new rosters altogether. Now, I don't think, you know, I would put them necessarily in those categories at this point, but I think when it comes to teams that haven't necessarily proven themselves,